Good morning, Nation. Good morning, Nicole Bernard. Good morning. Yes, I haven't seen you forever. I because you've been busy running. That's true. <laughs> and recovering. Just been a lot of recovery. <laughs> Resting in recovery, Nicole Bernard. Hey, you got Keith and Nicole. We're starting week three here. Mornings in the lab are day eleven. So thank you for joining in, jumping in, listening in. We're hoping to be that morning voice to start your day, keep you accountable, be that morning alarm clock, give you content to hope to help you move accountable. Hey, today, Nicole, we are going to, you're going to like today's topic. I haven't shared it with you. Mm-mm. I think we're week four too, by the way. Are we? We're show 11. So five, first five and then 10 and then, yeah, isn't that the third week? I think we're going into our fourth week, though. How how can we only have five shows? Shows. So haven't we done three weeks behind us? I don't know. I'm going to have to check my email now. Haven't we done two? I'm sorry. (laughs) It's Monday, Nation. (laughs) Haven't we done done two weeks behind us? Yes. Well, okay. I thought last week it was like third week's a charm or something was our first theme. I don't know. (laughs) You know what? I think you're probably right. Maybe Uncle Keith here has been wrong about the dates all along, but I thought we were on number 11. What the hell, Nation? You can tell us both what time we're on, what day we're on. But Nicole, today is the Barkley Marathon the toughest race in the world? That's what they say. So I've grabbed some video. You got me thinking. You got me thinking about, about this race. So I did some research on the weekend. and I'm like, oh. I think Business Athlete Nation needs to be made aware of Barkley Marathon. Mm-hmm. They need to be aware of the woman that won it. Yes. Incredible. 40-year-old mom of two. Love it. It's amazing. Yeah. So I, I didn't even find her anywhere like on social media like to connect with her. I'm like, where are you, Jasmine? Right. Is that right, eh? Mm-hmm. Interesting. So we're going to talk about that coming up later in the morning on the show here. The, is the Barkley Marathon the toughest race in the world and it's hard to argue that it's not mm-hmm. and sorry to say it might, it might actually minimize your accomplishments miss nicole bernard oh for sure yeah <laughs> no it's true so let's get to those in a few moments no let's get to them right now H- how was the weekend because i know that when we last chatted on thursday we were dialing up for friday morning with dr ford dyke and then i recall that i got a text friday morning say hey teammate i need you to grab my back because uh little change I had to call an audible this morning mm-hmm. and uh, you had to make some changes to the schedule and then you embarked on a journey that lasted it felt like for me nicole about a week <laughs> how long did it feel like for you like a year oh god yeah <laughs> when in all actuality it was 30 hours and 53 seconds which again yes looking at compared to like the barclays i'm like man you're such a baby these people are like <laughs> out there in the cold but yeah so did the the goggins challenge the every four hours but i condensed a lot of it that's the first time i was like i hate david goggins i don't like this game anymore (laughs) that was at the 4 a.m run which was delayed that was what kind of threw off my schedule like that next morning after i think i was like i don't know 30 something miles in and just was so tired like I said, I thought about quitting, but I didn't. So wasn't so, what I thought it would be, but just kept going. So break it down for me and break it down for Business Athlete Nation. I, I saw your stories. You were contributing to the almighty Zuckerberg Instagram feed. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to. I watched them. I'm sure many others did. But break down those 32 hours for us, Nicole. Yeah. So usually it's four miles every four hours for 48 hours. And I don't know, I don't know why, honestly, like I was originally supposed to do this like a few weeks ago, but I was sick and Mm -hmm. then it just turned out, I was like, I've got a limited time. How could I make it? Should I try to make it a little tougher and just try to do it as fast as I can with the 32 hour mark, 30 to 32 hour mark being a goal of let's condense it. Mm -hmm. So started last Thursday morning, right before our show with Naomi, I had my first run Yes, and then went back out, had another issue with the gym. So I didn't make the 6 a.m. run, turn around, came home. And it was a different vibe too, because I've never done it when my kids are in school and we're doing other things. It's been blocked off on a weekend. So it was like yeah. still trying to like live and do these things. But anyway, I started eight, the, the eight, 10, 12, two, four. 
and thinking that like I was still would be fresh going into the night runs and having a four hour break because I spread out. I went back to the four hour break at night, but it, it wasn't. It kicked me in the ass because I was so, so tired by the time that the night runs came. But yeah, I don't know. So I just slugged through it. And it's you're on the treadmill at 12 15 in the middle of yes. the night. You're just like, what am I doing? <laughs> Believe me, why am I, was, I doing this? <laughs> I was asking you that question myself. Mm -hmm. So let's just keep breaking this down. So it's 12 15 in the morning, you're on the treadmill, you're in the house on the treadmill, or you're in the garage. No, I went to the gym. You went to the gym. Okay, so you get 24 hour gym. Are there people in there, or are you by yourself? In by yourself, that's the, and the, all the times I've done it at the midnight runs, there's only been one other person there one time. So that one is just, and we're in like a tiny little town, so it's like yes. the streets rolled up at nine, everybody's yes. in bed, yes. it's so dark, and then like it's the lights in that gym are like motion. So every few like 10 minutes, if I didn't remember to get off, like all the lights would shut off, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Someone's gonna come steal me. <laughs> you know what? But you have to admit, Nicole Bernard, how empowering is that? Like, just meet me. I know how much you love video, and I know how much you love expressing yourself in front of video. But honest to God, you walk into the gym all by yourself at twelve fifteen a.m. There's nobody around. You, you you gotta have to look at yourself in the mirror and look around and really say, "And here comes Nation." I'm gonna. But you you gotta say, Fuck "Yeah." Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. yeah totally. It's def yeah, it's definitely like half of this is insane, but half like I am doing this. So yeah, it's a great mindset shift. Like, yes. yeah, like nobody else is out here for good reason. <laughs> but yeah, but everybody else is sleeping. And I'll say this, and I'm gonna say this not to be braggocious. But everybody else is sleeping. You and I are here right now. And I'm okay yeah. with that because the world needs people to help. We all need each other to help each other be accountable. Yeah. We're a team here. You send me a note on Friday saying, hey, I got this commitment. I'm like, go do it, man. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. You got you got, you got to take care of this commitment. Uh, I got you. Ford and I got a great show going on, and we'll see you Monday. And uh, we went on did the show. I went on to drive out to Brandon to my kid's game. I, I feel like I accomplished a whole bunch of life as I kept looking at the clock, and I'm thinking about you just running and running. Towards the end, it was more of a hobble. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it hurt. I, I don't think I've hurt that bad in one of these and I talked to my friend the guy that got me into this years yes. ago I sent him yeah. my schedule and then he writes back he was like yikes I was like jeez oh, like <laughs> and I was like I can't like I'm so I've never felt this bad and he was like I think it's just the the two hours like the squishing it together so so how long was the longest segment you ran it's only four hours so well actually four miles four. yeah four miles but yes on the last two because I was delayed, I did a four mile loop. By that time, it was like eight in the morning. I think it was the 8 a.m. run. Came back, got some Gatorade, and I was like, fuck this. Sorry, this is the morning show. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, no. I'm just going out one more time to end this yeah. torture. And so that wasn't even a two hour break. So I guess you want to say like eight, eight miles was the last push. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So now Elliot, a lot of old school rap on that run. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask you what, so what are the tunes you got going on in the head? Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people ask me that. So it varies. Like I will literally go from like Missy Elliott and Tupac to like, li like listening to audiobooks, like in tune with yep. the incident and like oh, yeah. deep stuff like that, like becoming supernatural by Joe Dispenza. The nighttime runs, I watched Cobra Kai. I'm not going to, I will own that. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I love how we're getting to know each other here. So mid the midnight runs, it's Cobra Kai. Yep. At the 4 a.m. I was like, there's no like that. This is the only thing that's gonna get me through right now. I have to like yeah. distract myself because I just wanna die. <laughs> but again, I love the concept of distraction, right? Because in your head you're saying, okay, oh. if I can distract myself, I can at least then at least will myself to move one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And as long as I'm moving one foot in front of the other, I'm going to complete this thing. Yeah. Cause I, a treadmill sucks anyway. Sorry for yeah. I love treadmills, but yeah. It feels like it's the slowest. I don't know if it's because you can watch it go by down, but it's just, oh my God. And so again, like in the middle of the night when it's just like, seems extra slow, it's so <laughs> funny, the change of like perspective of different times of the day, which is probably why he came up with this challenge. Yeah, it was brutal. Oh, there you go. So I think you just, I think you've illuminated what we haven't even talked about. And I, I mean, actually I got a topic to today to talk about it. But Nicole, what you actually went through was the mental challenge, wasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, you complained about the feet and the legs and you're hobbling and so forth, but yeah. it was that mental grind of, oh, okay, I got to do this again. Uh-huh. Yep. 
and it's funny too. And that, I think that's why I do it. And a lot of people do it or whatever people yeah. want to do to push themselves. It's like you commit to it and then you're in it and then it's okay. How am I going to keep navigating this to work through it? Which is like essentially yes. entrepreneurship. So it is. Uh, no, yeah, it is but, it absolutely mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. Yep. And it's for me. Yeah. It's a nice mental and gut check at least once a year. I've, previous years I've done it like twice a year, but I don't know if I'm going to do it again this year. <laughs> Will you write about your experience? I don't know. Possibly. And I've written about it before, obviously, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. There was a cool, I listened to Arnold Nightingale as well. I don't know if you've ever listened to any of his works and he had a, one I stumbled upon one of the runs, a common denominator of success. And I actually thought it was really an interesting audio. It was like on a record, but that's obvious on YouTube. So I thought that might be a cool article was breaking that down and obviously talking about, I mean, on my run and kind of correlating that somehow, but that was my only thought. I, what I'm intrigued by too, and I'd be great to do one of those polls or as we build the audience here and talk to nation is like, what does somebody listen to, to get them through those moments? Like I know Lauren, I speak on behalf of Lauren. She is so adamant, Nicole, at uh, creating her music playlist and the right kind of music at the right moment she feels is going to be in, in, in her marathon pace or at a certain pace. So, and she says to herself, if I'm not at this song at this point, it's just, and I, that intrigues me. Mm-hmm. Yet, for, yet for me, who hates running, Nicole, I don't even know if I pay attention to the music in my head or even if I'm like, I'm just so focused on getting to the end of this whole experience that I hate. Yeah. I'm not even really thinking about what's playing in my head. Mm-hmm. Is it over? Is it over? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Now, I, I will admit that I, when I do my runs, run walks, I do them with Peloton and Lauren will often say, so who did you run with? What did you listen to? I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not too sure. I saw the minutes tick on by and I'm like, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. Good on you. That's, that's an exceptional accomplishment. And this accomplishment, Business Athlete Nation, kicks off Nicole's continued 100 training day journey on the way to doing her ultra marathon June 22nd in Oregon. Yep. Yep. Friday. Wait. Yeah. So seven, eight. Yeah. I think I'm on today's day 10. Mm-hmm. You... Now let's compare that ultra marathon experience to what you just did this last weekend. The ultra marathon is going to be thirty-one miles. Yeah, in a set time frame. You you don't have you don't have eight weeks to do it. You got to get it done like on the moment. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's three laps. I think there is a cutoff time too. I can't remember what it is, but I will say this did feel good. Like when I hit that mileage, just I'm like considering I have eighty something more. 90 more days to actually train for this. It felt good. So it was like a nice little catapult into the training as well, just as I do every year. But yeah, so I'm excited. Like it felt good. And now I see that I shocked my body. It's okay. We can do this. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey, how did you feel yourself, Nicole, for the whole experience? What did you, were you eating on the fly? Were you eating all the time? Were you fasting? What were you doing for fuel? Yeah. So usually, and I think this is why I love it, partly love it. Um, I love to eat. Like I should, I really love to eat. And so every year, this is like a big deal. I get to get all the junk food that I don't normally do. I order pizza. This year was different. And again, I think it's because of how condensed it was the entire time. And I could see how many calories I was burning every time knowing I needed to eat, but I, I was not hungry. I had one piece of pizza, I think a half of a bagel throughout the entire entire time and like a few like granola bars, but I was not hungry. And it's funny too, because I was talking to my husband about it because like (laughs) having children, whole similar time frame of what I just did, but my body wasn't wrecked like it was. And I think it's because that was like a natural shock, not shock, Mm. but like a natural thing Mm -hmm. that my body was slightly prepared for. But this, I completely shocked it very quickly on like the other challenges and giving birth. And so my body was just like, no, like I pretty much survived on like Gatorade and Colonel Mars. It was weird. Like I've never, my appetite's never been like that before. I think you raise a valid point, Nicole, because often we're encouraged to fuel and eat and which I'm not trying to suggest we don't. Right. What I am suggesting or recommending or perhaps asking the audience to consider is really to consider how you're feeling as a human, not yeah. really what everybody else is telling you what to do. So if fuel right now is not working for you, don't force yourself to fuel. I I don't know. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Even all the half marathons I ran last year and same thing. Everybody's like, you need a huge breakfast before. And I I actually, even when I go run now, I don't like eating a ton before I go run. That's just me. I know everybody's different, 
So same thing. I mean, I have a granola bar and a cup of coffee before a half marathon. People are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't yes. have like fruit. I'm like, no, I hate it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I think you're right. Whatever feels good for you. Took me a long time that. to figure that out. Took me a long yeah. time to figure that out because I was always chasing, I got to do this. I got to do that. Somebody said to do this. And yeah. you know, I always say until I went to Focus Fitness and met AJ and met a bunch of the professionals down there at the facility where I learned this business athlete type mentality. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's about learning what works for me. Yep, uh, adapting totally. what works for me and then embracing it. And then most importantly, being consistent. Yes. Yeah. You just broke down entrepreneurship again. <laughs> yeah, but it's true though, right? And mm -hmm. there is, we all, we're all searching for the magic pill. If you're not showing up consistent, it's just not going to work. So I can give you, or Nicole can give you every trick in the book, but if you're not going to do it consistently, it just ain't going to happen. Yep. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. So Nicole, why don't we take a minute or two break for Nation, refresh coffee, and then what we'll do when we come back, let's get into some headlines of the day. Let it, let's talk about, is the Barkley Marathon the toughest race in the world? I also want to talk about some uh, LinkedIn stuff going on. I've been on my profile as per Naomi Rose Everly last week. I want to show you some of that. I want to show you the post that's going on this week. And I want to talk a little bit about Bapple HQ, which we're going to start creating more awareness on this week, more marketing on this week, because it's some things that happened, I don't know, just in the business, on the entrepreneurial side of, of the business athlete performance lab in the last week with some of the things happening around here. So I'll tease that. We'll come back in a minute or two and we'll, uh, we'll continue the conversation. How does that sound? Okay. That sounds great. I'll see you in a minute here. All right, I'm back here in the lab here, Nation. Nicole will be joining us here in a second. How was everybody's weekend this weekend? I spent the weekend uh, driving up and down the road, heading to hockey rinks here in North America. My son's in the finals of their hockey championships. So that's what I did this weekend. Spent the time driving up and down as well as building the lab and uh, getting some things sorted out. So, Nicole, before we jump into is the Barkley Marathon the toughest race in the world. And again, I don't, I'm going to suspect this until you mentioned it last week. I don't, I bet you a lot of people don't know about the Barkley marathon. Yeah, probably not. If what's the saying for it, if you know about it, don't talk about it. It's almost like the fight club saying, yes. Like, yeah. So but, uh, I will confess know about it now. <laughs> we do. And I'll confess to you that I'm thinking, so we got a business we're building here and I'm like, all right, not a lot of people know about the Barkley marathon. Started doing a little bit of research over the weekend. If we create some content about the Barkley Marathon, we might draw some interest and draw some people over to us to say, hey, they're talking about the Barkley Marathon. What are they talking about? So we're going to get to that in a few moments. That's a little hook, little teaser. But before we do that, let's jump into last week, Naomi Rose Everly was here. And she broke down your LinkedIn profile and my LinkedIn profile. Now, I know that you were busy running around the planet and just keeping yourself active. So I would not expect you have my, had much time to get into the profile. I did. I took some time 
to dig into the profile. And I wanted to show you some of the improvements that I have made, show Nation some of the improvements I have made. Not complete yet, but certainly have taking some of Naomi's advice, heeding her advice, and working at improving my profile to show Nation that I listen. And that to those that are in Business Athlete Nation that are dismissive of improving your LinkedIn profile, mm, I, think you might, I think this might be something to pay attention to. So let's just do this. I'm going to pull this off of here so that people aren't watching us watch ourselves. Although, no, that's not going to work because I got me on there. So uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to do this. We're going to boom, present. This is live on the air here, folks. This is the fun part of doing live content. No, not that one. We're going to do this here. We're going to do share screen. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So on my profile, obviously we're playing on there, so you really can't see it, but I changed my profile banner. I've updated, I've made it more clean, more robust. So it's easier for the audience to get a sense of what I'm doing. But here's what I did. I changed my profile image, added some color to it, but Naomi encouraged me to draw attention to uh, something this fellow accomplished in his life, which was that I successfully created and sold a bootstrap business for $50 million. So while I was reluctant, Nicole, to put that out there, because it seems like everybody's done that. She's I don't like, know everybody's done that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you're right. That's exactly what Naomi said. She's like, oh, Keith, that's through your lens. When you see other people right. that have put that, you think that everybody has done that, when in reality... Yeah. Very little people have done that. So yeah, super impressive. <laughs> you might want to draw attention to that. And I, it's funny because I got a post coming out tomorrow. No, I think it's actually today. And I'll, I'll draw attention to it. But it's, so I'm just a kind Canadian guy. Nicole, I, I don't, I'm not one who stands on a platform and don't have a sign behind me. That's what I've accomplished. So I've had to nice. come to terms with, okay, that's part of my credibility. And it wasn't by accident. We, successfully bootstrapped a company and sold it for some money. So I brought that to the front of the profile. So if anybody's listening right now, yes, that's the credibility I bring to the table. Yep. So I put that to the front and then I added on to the back there, which was, okay, so I've done this. So now that I've hooked you, Nicole, as the reader, you're now going, okay, so now what's he doing? Oh, now he's helping ambitious humans achieve their audacious goals. Okay. So now I get what Naomi was saying, which is okay. So Keith, boom and then lead me with the hook, and then lead me into why I should read the next sentence. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, I do too. I, I think it was some great advice. Yeah. Uh, I made a little change to my headline here. I got, I will entertain and inform you. So that I'll click to my, click to our channel. And then Nicole Bernard, I made some, I've been playing with the featureds. So I start your day with me, which takes us right to our morning show channel. So we can make one of these for you too, if we like. I got this one here, I entertain and inform, which takes me right to the Live in the Lab show. This one here, for anybody that kind of really wants to get to know Keith, this is what I stand for. So this video here is like a 14 minute video on the, the manifesto, my values, my attributes. And anybody who wants to get to know me right off the bat, you watch that, you're like, all right, I get, I know where the guy stands. You don't gotta watch any other of the thousand videos this guy's made, I can watch that and I'm off to the races. And then this one here is how I've achieved my goals in life. This 100-day kind of mentality, 100-day flex plan, these 100-day concepts, breaking it down. So that's that. And I got a couple more thumbnails coming. One, which is introducing the world to Bapel headquarters for start, starting to talk about this week. And then uh, there's one more. Oh, the two dads in the lab thumbnail that I got coming out as well. So awesome. yeah, so those are the, uh, that is what I've taken heed from Naomi. And I am going to make changes to this here today as well because she said i need to make some changes to this as well as improve some of my content around my experience mm -hmm. i love it and your profile picture did you use any of this do you use ai to create any of this stuff which i would assume yes but <clears throat> So my profile picture is me. And so there's no AI there. That's just, that's a picture of me. But okay. I'll tell you, you talk about, so, cause I'll talk about this in a few minutes about tools. That's just me on my iPhone, pop it into Canva. Their image background remover tool. Yes. It's, is exceptional. It's a game changer. Yes. It's exceptional. Like I, so Celine, my designer, is like, I need a picture. Okay. Click, upload it to Canva and the, removes the background and, there really should be no excuse for anybody who's I don't really have an image of myself or it takes so much time. Nicole, less than a minute, like less than probably 50 seconds, you can have an image and have the background removed. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I was thinking for myself too, and probably other 
entrepreneurs for like, to get a branding like session and have all these things, which would be great. And I'm not saying yes. not to, and that yes. I will eventually do that too, but there are quick fixes for the interim to do. Like our phones are ridiculously like high quality. There are. And you know what? It's funny because I had a conversation with somebody yesterday I said, thanks for helping me remove my, my perfectionism. And I said, actually, thank you for helping me remove my perf perfectionism because I've had to, I've learned to embrace 1% every single day. Yeah. Because then I recognize that after 10 days, I've improved 10%. It's not yeah. so cliche and dumb. But often, Nicole, I would fail at, e at even getting started. Because I'm like, oh, it's not perfect. I need to, I got to wait for that perfect profile picture of myself. Does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Totally. So I'm like, okay, I can do this right now. And I can get it done by Canva and off to the races we go. So that's what I've been really approaching on. And then this weekend, I took some time to also work on updating the business profile page as well. Now, it's interesting with LinkedIn, right? Because you talk to people about LinkedIn and you talk about business profile pages. They're good, but they're really... Like your personal page is where all the value is. Yeah. It really is. That's mm -hmm. LinkedIn juice. LinkedIn wants to see the human behind the thing. So to those that are listening right now, yes, your business page is important. And I'm going to spend, and I'm spending some time updating and massaging ours. It's, it's like our website right within LinkedIn. I'm going to take you guys th through some of the changes I made, but really where I'm placing most of my emphasis is on building up my personal page because LinkedIn is really about human beings. And yeah. The business side is to run ads against. But so what I did take some time, Nicole, was to really clearly identify what the business athlete performance lab is and where the mission lies and so forth. So let me take a moment to take the, take you through this. So the business athlete performance lab mission to help ambitious humans, entrepreneurs, founders, athletes, yourself, creators, achieve their biggest, most audacious goals by transforming accountability into sustaining life-changing practices. Now, why accountability? I think it's the reason that I, we started this show here. It's the one skill that I know you believe in and I believe in that you need to learn to sustain success. And what I like about our discussion this morning is that your achievement, the Goggins Challenge, is just the ultimate in accountability, Nicole. Mm-hmm. You had to do it yourself. Nobody was there at 12.15 a.m. with you. You're like, all right, I'm doing block X. It's 12.15. And if I'm going to achieve this, I got to do this. Yeah. How did you feel when you were done? Like when you recognized the body was, this, I know it's a real simple question, but help me in the audience understand how you really felt with, at the end of that accomplishment. Yeah, it, felt, it really does. It feels great. Like other than, like you said, I was extremely, my body really hurt, but mentally I was like, just I was like, all right, I did it. This is yes. the whole reason of why I, I started is just to know that one, I can do it. I'm like blessed to be able to even try to attempt to right. do something like that. And just, we can do hard things. I think that's for me, like mm -hmm. I have to check myself every once in a while. Same, similar to your, your LinkedIn profile. You didn't want to quite put that you've accomplished something like that. Cause mm -hmm. I think we're like, oh, I don't want to come off or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or we worry about what other people think. And I don't mm -hmm. know, sometimes mm -hmm. I get lost in my head and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I have to pull myself out of something like that, out of like my comfort zone to accomplish something, it's just like a, for me, a reminder, like, all right, you did that. You can do whatever else. Like you can do hard things. That's and think about what you're teaching your children. Yeah. Do you think about that when you're going through it or at the end of it? Because if you don't, I will help you call attention to it because- we, all, we often think about what we're talking about to our children. Mm -hmm. We often forget what we're, what, we often forget what they're observing when we're not speaking to them. Yeah, yes, it is definitely part of I, what a, the part of the legacy, I guess, that I'm teaching them and want to leave them be, like leave behind when I'm not here. So yeah, that's definitely part of it because I want them to know too that they can do hard things. But life isn't always easy, and, and you do need to be accountable, and you do need to try things that suck sometimes. And just, yes, yeah. yeah, it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. So again, Nicole's journey uh, of achieving that uh, the David Goggins challenge and her journey going towards her ultra marathon really is the underlying theme of the content we're here to create in the lab. Again, that vision to be your go-to accountability partner. Old school media woke you up in the mornings with morning shows built around a certain music themes, whether it's country music or rock music or pop or talk shows. We're waking you up 
or helping you get through your day with content that is hopefully aspiring, inspirational, motivational, content that helps you feel accountable, content that perhaps encourages you to move your foot in front of the other and just get the thing done, content that says, okay, if I just get to the, the gym, I'm going to be able to achieve my goal today. So that's our goals here with the lab and with the content we're creating. It's because the Business Athlete Performance Lab is we're going to use content, community, and ubiquitous connection. Again, I believe in this idea of connection with the members to create a culture of accountability. We're going to do that through this morning show, through Bapple HQ, which we're going to start, you're going to start seeing content across the platforms coming out this week around that. Bapple Academy, these courses we're going to offer people to help them achieve their, their greatness. The Live in the Lab newsletter, that's only getting better. The, the daily talk show that I'm doing at noon with interesting people. Today, I got one coming up with, I got to check, oh, Sonia, I think it's Sonia. I got to check the name. <laughs> Not prepared for that at the moment. <laughs> There's confessions behind the scenes. Yeah, I just, I got to get to the morning show before I worry about noon today. And then, of course, two dads in a lab trying to be 2% better with Di Manuel. Hey, Nicole, we had Wayne Boatwright on Friday in the lab. Wayne served six and a half years in San Quentin. Oh, wow. He was unfortunately involved in a, in a drunk driving accident where he took the life of a human being. And he spent six and a half years in, in San Quentin, sat down in the lab with Di and myself and talked about, we did a two-part episode. He talked about not only taking responsibility for that, but also talked about what it was like having to sit down with his children to speak about that experience and so wow. forth. I'll have to go watch that. I bet that was powerful. Yeah, it was, uh, we're, we're going to invite, uh, we're going to invite Wayne back for a further sit down. We did not, we had some technical issues with the show. So that's going to drop on Wednesday and Friday this week, but we're going to invite him back to uh, get further into that conversation. Cause I was quite, cause there's, I think there's more to unpack there behind Wayne. Great fellow, but those of you that haven't, ha have not heard it, I encourage you to check it out. And then of course, Apple's a game changer for ambitious people like entrepreneurs, founders, athletes. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a founder, you're an athlete, you're a creator, you belong here. You belong with Keith and Nicole in the lab. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This, we want you, this to be your home, right? And if you struggle to stay accountable, or if you are good at being accountable and want to help others at being accountable, come join the, come join us, yeah. right? Come help others, right? We know what keeps you up at night when we know how to help. When you join us, we got your back. We're on the same team here. So some of the values we talk about here in the lab, we put health first, non-negotiable. We focus on the journey. To us, performance is about focusing on the journey, not necessarily the outcome. The outcome is obviously important, but that journey. When Nicole was doing her journey, she knew the outcome was going to come. You knew it was going to come, Nicole, but you just said to yourself, okay, if I just focus on putting one, if I focus on Cobra Kai right now at 1230 in the morning, I'll, okay, I'll make a confession right now. We got a high audience right now. I'll make a confession with you. So while you're digging into Cobra Kai, I think that my guilty pleasure at that time would be perhaps maybe housewives. That's awesome. I'm really glad you confessed that. <laughs> I just admitted that on the air to Business Athlete Nation that yes, I might have to watch some housewives to get myself through some trash. Let me just confess why. It's just trashy dessert. I can put it on. I can do my work. I can jump in when I hear somebody yelling at somebody. I can jump back out and focus on work. I don't have to really pay attention. I can laugh at perhaps how people are maybe dressed or at how their appearances have changed due to chemical alterations. And I can make judgments in my own head. Not that I do, of course. That's awesome. I, well, and you know what's funny is that like on my podcast, so I've had over 200 episodes, yes. I ask what people watch and that is a very popular one. Like I would probably say like, maybe not the majority. It's probably like 75, oh geez, what would that math be? 25 of like, trashy Bravo TV. Like same thing. They're like, I, my brain runs all day. I do a million yes. things. I'm a business owner. I want to turn it off. And that's what a lot of people turn to. And I get it. Like it makes so much sense. We don't have to think. I love it. It, it modern day soap operas. Mm -hmm. It's true. It really is. And, and kudos to Bravo. Kudos for Andy Cohen and the crew there for putting it together and entertaining all of us. Mm -hmm. it's, because it's interesting, right? Because it's the most successful show on television that nobody watches. Oh, I don't watch Housewives. Oh, no, no. But you know who that lady is. Yeah. Or and it's that same thing here in Canada, Nicole, or I think around the world. No, I don't like Nickelback. No, I hate Nickelback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, they haven't sold any albums. Nobody buys tickets to Nickelback. Oh no, you just go to their arenas. They're full everywhere. So I laugh at these concepts of, oh, I hate that yet somebody is. But I will tell you something about, okay, I guess this is the pop culture side of our P of Apple today. Yeah. I, I will tell you, Nicole Bernard, that I'm convinced that separations, divorce, and marriage troubles are today's headlines to hook attention to have people watch TV shows. Hmm. You can see that. Allow me to express why. Yeah. Not that I know anything about any of this. <laughs> All right. Here's the headline. Breaking down reality TV headlines with Keith <laughs> Live in the lab, with mornings in the lab with Keith and Nicole. All right, Nicole, it all started with Scandal. It all started with Vanderpump Rules last year where Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval got into a whole situation and Tom cheated on Ariana. Yes, audience, I'm having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Keith's well-versed, man. Keith, oh, Keith pays attention. So when Bravo and reality TV recognized Nicole Bernard that the world was fascinated by people's marriage demise, and the trauma that comes with marriage is crumbling and divorce and all of that. And it's, oh, housewives are like, oh, they're making a bunch of noise over there with that storyline. Mm -hmm. I think if we plant seeds on this today, by the time our show comes out, we'll have something to talk about in the headlines. So I'm just, it's just, I don't know. It just seems coincidental to me that last week buying Beverly Hills dropped over on, on Netflix and Housewives of Beverly Hills just finished and the Mauricio Ormansky and Kyle Richards discussion is headlines in the media. Not that I know about any of this. Mm, clearly not. Seems to make sense to me. I'm a marketer. I'm a creative marketer. I'm a business person. It seems to make sense to me that it would make sense to me. Yeah. That if you're going to draw people in, that's how you do it. Totally. It's funny that you even, okay, so you said the Tom Sandoval guy, right? So I, <clears throat> honestly, I've never seen any of the Real Housewives of any of them ever. Yes. But I do watch that celebrity show where they go and they try to train like seals or something. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, I can't remember that. Yes, and that guy was on it. And he was talking You're about right. how hated him. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? So <laughs> then I had to go Google him. So I still somehow found my way back to him and all of his drama, even through a different show. It's true. There you go. There you go. So there's Keith and Nicole's pop culture breakdown here on a Monday morning. Just to keep in the light for everybody. If you're looking to break up your day to keep yourself motivated, to keep yourself light, go tune on some. Go turn on some housewives as I spill my drink over here in the lab. Let's. Why don't we take a break? I'm gonna go clean my mess up. We're gonna take a minute. I'll clean my mess, and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back with this. Is the Barkley Marathon the toughest race in the world? So I have a YouTube video clip. We'll watch it together. We'll talk about it and then we'll break it down and then we'll do a couple headlines, wrap up the show. How does that sound? Sounds awesome. Awesome. I'll see you back here in a minute. I'm going to go and clean this mess. Not the coffee on the computer. Just a little right. bit of water behind me. Hang tight. Yeah. All right, clean the mess up, nation. I, I knew this was going to happen one morning, Nicole. I was like, oh, so one morning, I know I'm going to make a mess here on my desk. 
I don't know why I just kind of slapped my water. All right, so enough of that. Let's get into last segment of the show. We're getting better with the timing. Oh, and wait till you see by the end of the week, 1% better. Wait till you see the newsletter we're going to be popping out by the end of the week. I'm going to surprise you, actually, because I've been working on it quietly over the weekend, the design of it. I think it's going to be pretty slick. My vision is that people will get like a recap of our show, like in like in a newsletter type format in their inbox. Yeah. So if you missed the show, and then also, Nicole, I want to break these segments down. So right now we're going to get into uh, the Barkley Marathon. We'll break this segment down, and uh, we're going to cut it up and put it onto YouTube. Again, people ask, like, so why do you create so much content? Here's the thing. If we're going to create it anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Mm-hmm. Here's my thought process. So we're going to create content for YouTube anyways. Why don't we get up in the morning, do a morning show, keep people accountable, sh- work in the open. We're, I'm building this business anyways. So if we can inspire others to do the same thing, get up with us, build their business collaboratively with us, and then we're going to cut it up and put it out there and make some cash on the YouTubers. Okay, listen, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to pull up this video for the Barkley Marathon. And we're going to talk about Jasmine Paris, the first ever female finisher at the Barkley Marathon. Let's, so this is a, an eight, a nine minute clip. So let's, let's dig into this. Okay. Hang tight. We're going to go up, 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 up. I started, there's a documentary. Have you seen that? I started it Friday after I came home, but I fell asleep halfway through. Did, but, and I, yeah, yes, and I was being selective on what I was, because I was like, okay, we don't have an hour and a half to show it in the show today. So I was trying to find some content that we can mm-hmm. use. So here's, uh, here it is here. So let's do this here. Boom. Woman ever in the history of the Barclay Marathons to complete all five loops. The Barclay Marathons was created in 1986 by Gary Cantrell, otherwise known as Lazarus Lake. It was originally a 50 mile race, but soon became the 100 mile race and over that we know now. Five loops of the Frozen Head State Park in Tennessee. There had only been up until today, 17 individual finishers of that race. Just about 60 hours ago, 40 or so runners headed off from the Yellow Gate at the Frozen Head State Park, the start of the Barclay Marathons 2024. A friend of mine was taking part, Hendrik Bury, you might remember him from the Suffolk Backyard Ultra in the UK here last year, where he was the assist with 81 yards. He also took part in Big's Backyard Ultra, and he was invited to take part in the Barclay by Laz himself. Hendrik managed one loop, which is absolutely amazing for your very first Barclay. I'm sure he'll want to go back and try and better that next time. But one loop is amazing. Some people start the Barclay, don't even get that far. Other people who've done Backyard Ultras who were involved in this year's Barclay, there was Harvey Lewis, who's the world record holder. I've set that world record at Big's Backyard Ultra last year. He didn't make it to the end, didn't make it past the fourth loop. So Harvey tapped out quite early on. But the other person was Eeyore Berries, who was Harvey's assist at that world record. And Eeyore, in fact, was the very first person back having completed five loops and finished the Barclay Marathons this year. So essentially, Eeyore was the winner of the Barclay Marathons this year. So congratulations to Henrik and Eeyore. Fantastically well done. Amazing finish by Eeyore to come in first. However, there were two other runners who have done this event multiple times, coming back for another crack at it. Friend of the channel, John Kelly, who you may have seen the interview a few years ago. He was back for another try. He's done two Barclay Marathons, completed two Barclay Marathons before. He was back for a third finish and he got it. Amazing work by John Kelly. Jared Campbell has completed all five loops three times and he was back again to see if he could be the first person to complete Barclay four times. And amazingly, this time, having had a DNF last year, he did finish it. He was the third person back. Incredibly well done to Jared. He is the first person ever to complete four Barclay marathons. But the big stories for us here in the UK were those of Jasmine Paris and Damien Hall, both huge ultra running stars here in the UK and around the world both of whom were at the Barclay in 2023. Damien Hall made it past loop four and started the final loop. Unfortunately, some nav issues, finding a book cost him time. He didn't make it back on loop five. Jasmine Paris 
made it further than any other woman has ever done in the Barclay Marathons. She made it past loop three and started loop four. She didn't finish loop four. She and Damien were both back to try again in 2024. Now, quite often the Barclay Marathon course will not take any prisoners. The weather can be brutal and quite often runners have come back and not completed the Barclay Marathon simply because of torrential rain or freezing conditions. On this occasion, this year, the Barclay Marathon weather was kind and the runners had a clear run and a clear stab at getting to five loops. As runners dropped throughout the 60 hours and we got to loop five, incredibly, seven runners were still in the game. We've never had that many runners starting loop five before. And two of those were Damien Hall and Jasmine Paris. Remarkably, the first 46 hours of the Barclay this year were relatively uneventful. The weather was kind. All the runners looked comfortable and in control. But it is that last loop which often catches people out. The problem being that a lot of the runners have gone around together, helping each other out, helping each other find the books, keeping each other's spirits up, keeping each other on the right navigation. However, on the last loop, runners have to go in opposite directions and often runners will find themselves on their own for the first time in the race, having to navigate in the dark or in poor weather by themselves, having not done so for the entire race. However, as we got closer to 60 hours, the first of those seven runners made it back. Eor from Canada and Ukraine made it back to the yellow gate in 58 hours and 44 minutes. Congratulations to Eor. We just had to wait a few minutes longer before the second runner made it back. John Kelly touching the yellow gate in 59 hours, 15 minutes for his third Barclay Marathon finish. But then the news that none of us wanted to hear or see from Keith Dunn's Twitter feed, Damien Hall comes back in the wrong direction having not completed loop five. Something must have happened out on loop five. He knew he wasn't going to make it back in time and he's come a short route back to camp. He didn't make it and I'm absolutely gutted for him, especially as just before that I had tweeted, I am very confident that Damien is going to make it back. I'm so sorry for him, but Damien will live to fight another day. He will be back, I am sure. He's got it in his bones now. He wants to finish the Barclay Marathons. Next to touch the yellow gate in 59 hours and 30 minutes, Jared Campbell made it four finishes of the Barclay Marathons, and he's the first person to do that. So congratulations to Jared. Amazing effort. After a DNF last year, he made it back this time. Four finishes for the amazing Jared Campbell. The next runner to make it back and the fourth finisher of this year's Barclay Marathons was Greg Hamilton, who finished in 59 hours, 38 minutes from New Zealand. Congratulations to him. And then we had another DNF, another person not making it back on the fifth loop. Sebastian Rikon from France didn't quite finish the Barclay Marathons 2024. Maybe he'll be back again for another crack next year. So that just left Jasmine Paris as the sole competitor out on the Barclay Marathon course with just minutes remaining. We were constantly refreshing our Twitter X feeds. We were constantly seeing if Keith Dunn was going to do another update. We were constantly trying to contact our friends, if we had any, on the Barclay Marathon campsite to see if they knew any news. Could we see a light in the distance? No, we couldn't, because even though it's dark here in the UK, it's daytime in Tennessee. It's just easier to imagine it in the dark. It seems somehow more dramatic to imagine it in the nighttime. Nevertheless, with just two minutes to go, less than two minutes to go, a tweet came from Keith Dunn. Jasmine Paris has touched the yellow gate. The first woman to finish the Barclay Marathons ever in the history of the Barclay Marathons. It's been going since 1986 and no woman has come close to finishing it. Jasmine was the closest ever last year. And this year she's gone one better. She's touched the yellow gate after completing five loops of the Barclay Marathon. Absolutely outstanding, unbelievable completely brilliant but also overdue overdue congratulations to jasmine paris this opens the door for women 
at the Barclay Marathons and in ultra running everywhere. You know it can be done. Jasmine finished in 59 hours. <clears throat> I totally have goosebumps watching this. This is incredible to me. Same. I know. It's hard to even fathom. It, it absolutely is. So we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pause this clip here, Nicole. I'm gonna. I'm gonna clip to the interview of Jasmine Paris Nation because this is equally stunning when you listen to her speak of her accomplishments here. First woman to finish the Barkley Marathon, and Nicole, the the Barkley Marathon for those that are uninitiated, and many of us are. It is five loops, twenty plus miles off trail course for a total of one hundred miles. Mm -hmm. Hundred. They change directions. When they go, they, they change directions. Mm -hmm. When yeah. they go out, <clears throat> they come back in. And then I think I can't remember, like, towards the end, like, whoever comes in and goes out first gets to choose which direction they go on loop five. And then who comes in after them, it's just automatically, but they're like going counter and, and clockwise on different loops. So it just throws them off. And then they have to find those book pages too. It's not just like a loop, they have to scavenge to find. Scavenge too, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's at least 60 hours, a 60 hour period. Oh, yeah. And Jasmine did it in under 60 hours, 59 hours, which is- She had 99 seconds left until the cutoff. Unbelievable to me. Yeah. What a great way to wrap up today's show, frankly, because if anybody's on a Monday is looking mm -hmm. for a reason to get started or to move your foot forward, or just you're listening to us right now and you're like, ah, oh, it's the start of my day or it's the start of spring break or it's lunchtime if you're in the UK or at the end of the day, just- Try to find a way to move one foot in front of the other and magic will happen. Yep, just start. Let's finish off the show today with a one-minute interview with Jasmine Paris, the first woman to finish the Barkley Marathon, which might be, Nicole Bernard, the toughest race in the world. Let's, uh, let's watch this, too, before we say goodbye today. Yeah. Boom. 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 Yeah, so I, I, I was just telling that, myself, so, uh, if you don't finish it now, you'll have to do it again. <laughs> I was channeling all that, so like, all that effort over, over the past five days. And, just, 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 and, then, and I, I couldn't believe I was still going. It was like everything was screaming for oxygen. And I was just making it go harder and harder. And then I guess I thought, I'll have to pass out or I'll finish. Um, and then I got to the gate, and it, it was really helpful. It was really amazing having everybody cheering me. If there's there a message you could share with the audience, what would it be like? What would you want the people to know about Barkley and about what happened these past couple of days? I don't know. Thank, thank you for following me and cheering me. And um, as whatever, whatever adventure you have, I don't believe you're stubborn. Be willing to take nice some risks and give it a go. To come back three times, I believed oh, that it was possible. Yeah. Oh, but it's worth being the F if there's something you really want. She believed it was possible, Nicole Bernard. Oops. She believed it was possible, Nicole Bernard. She showed up three times. On the third time, she completed it amazing it is amazing what an exceptional story jasmine paris completing the toughest race one would say perhaps in the world the barkley marathon introduced to me by nicole bernard last week thank you nicole mm -hmm. no awesome and you know what, what a, this actually perhaps might have been the epitome of the, the of, of the framework of an episode that i'm trying to create here in the lab inspiring actionable motivating content if you listen to us today i don't know i don't know how you can't feel like you got to get going today Nicole just finished her 32 miles in three minutes. Jasmine Paris, the first woman on the planet to complete the Barkley Marathon. And we're building a business, especially right in front of you guys, which I hope is inspiring to see the kind of stuff we're doing here. So we're going to leave it there, Nicole Bernard. What do you got on for the rest of the day? Um, <clears throat> a lot of work. Uh, my kids start spring break today, so they're home. Yes. So that's exciting. That'll be really fun. I know. It's a whole lot of, I'm hungry. It's like, what? <laughs> I just <laughs> you like five minutes ago. <laughs> yes. Business. How about you? Uh, you have one today, you said? Yeah. Oh, thank you for asking. I'm going to, yeah. So today coming up at noon here, live in the lab with Keith Billis, we have, do, 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 we have Stevie Don Carter, PhD, joining me today here in the lab, which I'm excited about that. And then later on today, I'm meeting with the gang from Rome, 
who's the backbone for behind the business athlete performance lab headquarters, Bapple HQ. So I know I didn't get, I didn't get too much of that today. We'll get to it tomorrow. I'm still learning, Nicole, the pacing of content. I stressed yesterday in the weekend, I'm okay, I don't have enough content for the show on Monday. And then we sit down and I'm like, oh, oh I didn't get to that. I didn't get to that. I didn't get to that. So sorry, nation, we're going to get better at it. But I hope we got some content to get you moving today. Have a good one, Nicole Bernard. We'll talk to you throughout. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, I'll talk to you later and I will see everybody tomorrow. You bet. And you have not seen this thing pop up yet, probably. So check this out. I have this new little thing that pops up that says goodbye to everybody. Let me see if I can oh. get it. Where is it here? Yeah, good. I'm making great content here right now as I'm trying to get you guys all hooked onto what I'm going to show you. And it ain't happening. So anyways, we will see you guys tomorrow <laughs> in the lab. We'll see you, Nicole. Awesome. Bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.